Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Aya, Batman Forever. Then, 1995 versus now, 2022. The charm of Batman is still fresh even after two decades after its release. There have been several adaptations of the comic, the third film in the original Batman movie series, and the first to be helmed by Joel Schumacher is Batman Forever. We get to see a fresh vibe in various aesthetic elements, including the performers, the design, and the musical mood. Chris O'Donnell played Robin, who made his series debut in the movie, which starred Val Kilmer as Batman. Along with Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, these actors play the antagonists, Two-Face and Riddler, respectively, in the movie. After 27 years of its release, Batman Forever still has a huge fan base, all thanks to the incredible cast and their impeccable acting. In this then and now video, we will be having a closure on the lives of the leading stars who appeared in the series hit, Batman Forever. You need help, Harvey. Give it up. Val Kilmer. Then, Val Kilmer at 36 got to play the role of our favorite DC superhero, Batman, in 1995, Batman Forever. Batman, also known as Bruce Wayne, emerges as a protector of Gotham City after his parents were murdered by Jack Napier. Though constant workouts and mental strategies, Batman takes over all his deadly opponents like Two-Face and Riddler. His real identity with a top-notch secret to everyone, and we see curious eyes wanting to see the face behind that mask. Now, at the age of 63, Val still performs in theaters. His professional acting career began on stage. He made his acting debut in the farce 1984, Top Secret, playing Nick Rivers. He appeared in several movies in the 1980s, including the 1986 blockbuster Top Gun. The world didn't sit up and take notice of him until his startling and memorable acting as Jim Morrison in Oliver Stone's The Doors 1991. He shares two children with his divorced wife, Joanne Wally. Tommy Lee Jones. Then, when 49, Tommy appeared in Batman Forever as the notorious character of the Two-Face, also known as Harvey Dent. In his first encounter with Batman, he was in the middle of thievery. Dent turned into a vicious, insane, and homicidal madman after being injured by an acid. He is popular for his obsession to use a coin that dictated all of his activities. He escaped from Arkham Asylum, murdered the Flying Grayson, and was engaged in the battle on Claw Island. Now, at 76, Tommy is famous for being the only Texan who acted the fellow Texan Howard Hughes. In only 10 days after graduation, he secured his role in the Broadway production of A Patriot for Me. He made his screen debut in Love Story in 1970. He continued performing in plays, including Fortune and Men's Eyes, and Four on a Garden. He also had an appearance in the drama One Life to Live. He is wedded to Don Jones since 2001 and has two children with his ex-wife, Kimberly Cloley. Nicole Kidman, then, at Glamorous 28. Nicole played the character of Dr. Chase Meridian, who was not easy to take down. As a police consultant, she assisted in chasing down Two-Face. While on her duty, she meets Batman, who gets her at once. Though her intelligence, witty remarks, and fearlessness, she grabs Batman's attention, too. He saw her during the turning of the Bat Signal, Gotham Charity Circus, Nigma Tech Party, and also when Riddler and Two-Face invaded Wayne Manor. Now, at 55, she is a mom of four kids and is married to Urban Key. Kidman quit high school to focus solely on her acting career. At the age of 16, she made her film debut in Bush Christmas 1983. She was then seen in 1983 BMX Bandits. In 1987, the miniseries Vietnam, she eventually made her U.S. debut in Dead Calm with Sam Neill. A startling fact about her is to wear a corset while filming the portrait of a lady she reduced her waist to 19 inches. This is how I found you. Let me demonstrate. Jim Carrey. Then, Jim, at the age of 35, played the character of the Wicked Riddler in the 1995 Batman Forever. He was one of the major villains in the series. Criminal mastermind Edward Nigma adopted the moniker, the Riddler, for himself. 
Nygma went to crime and utilized his scientific skills for evil after his idol Bruce Wayne discarded one of his inventions. He eventually became a crazy, demented criminal who always labeled his crimes with mysteries wrapped in riddles. Now, the actor is 60 now. We know Jim for his startling acting in the 1994 comedy The Mask. He landed the lead role in Once Bitten, played a supporting character in Peggy Sue Got Married 1986, and then made a modest impression in Earth Girls Are Easy as the extraterrestrial Whiplock 1988. In response to Carrie's craziness, Damon Wayans cast him in the sketch comedy series In Living Color 1990. He has been divorced twice and fathers a child from his first marriage. R. What's that stand for? Robin. Chris O'Donnell. Then, Chris played the role of Robin in 1995 Batman Forever, only at 25. Like Batman, Robin is also a victim of cruel two-faced atrocities who killed his parents, John and Mary. Robin, also known as Dick Grayson, was seen tagged along with Batman in the years that followed. A free-spirited man, Robin at times becomes careless. Poison Ivy got his romantic interest after she made her grand entry at Charity Ball. Robin discovers her true intentions later. Now, Chris has now turned 52 and lives merrily with his wife, Caroline, and father's five children. He has acted in a number of high-profile films, such as Fried Green Tomatoes, Scent of a Woman, Mad Love, and others. Wanting to spend more time with his family, Chris took a break from his acting career. He has been fond of working in the Batman series and once mentioned, my children will one day see these and recognize their father when they do. Michael Goff, then. Alfred Pennyworth was Batman's guardian after his parents were brutally murdered. Michael Goff played the character of Alfred in 1995 Batman Forever at 79 and also in 1989 Batman. Alfred is one of the closest people to Batman and a part of his leftover family. When he was diagnosed with McGregory syndrome, Batman along with Robin found the cure. From being his family's butler to becoming Batman's best friend. Alfred was one of those few people to whom Bruce revealed his secret identity. Now, on March 17, 2011, the actor passed away suffering from pneumonia at the age of 94. Having appeared in more than 150 movies, he is regarded as a legend in Hollywood. He had three broken marriages before his wedding to Henrietta Lawrence in 1980. He worked in the film industry, contributing his talents until he was very old. He served as a voice actor in Alice in Wonderland, which was his most recent significant undertaking. He has also appeared in numerous television programs. He was an actor with a passion right up until the very end. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Pat Hingle, then. Pat, at 61, appeared in Batman Forever as Commissioner Gordon. Gordon served as a huge supporter of Bruce. He worked with the mayor to catch Two-Face or Harvey when he threw tantrums in the city. Gordon is the loyal cop who aims to protect Gotham City at all costs. His solemn look further makes this character appear stricter. The commissioner remains on good terms with Batman. Now, Pat passed away at the age of 84 on January 3, 2009. At the time, he was married to Julia Ann Wright. Pat experienced a near-death accident when he fell down the elevator shaft of his New York apartment building and suffered injuries. He spent two weeks on the verge of death and ended up losing his little finger. Hingle appeared in all four Batman movies. He received Dharma Logue Award for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 1983. I made your favorite tonight. Sparkling champagne. Drew Barrymore, then. Drew played the sensual antagonist Sugar in the 1995 Batman Forever, merely at the age of 20. Alongside Spice, Sugar is one of the two faces' love interests and eventually becomes his badass lead in crime. Sugar maintains a pleasant attitude and is the polar opposite of Spice in nature. Maybe that is the reason she frequently stays on two faces' friendly side. Sugar's last appearance on screen was when Chase and Robin were held captive. Now, the star actor is 47 years old now. Her performance performances in The Wedding Singer, Ever After, A Cinderella Story, and Charles Angels and Donnie Darko gave her a chance to stand out as a formidable and versatile actor. The critically acclaimed television film Grey Gardens and her leading roles in Fifty First Dates, Fever Pitch, and Music and Lyrics followed. For her remarkable betrayal of Edith Bover Beale in this film, she won the Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild Awards. All three marriages of hers resulted in divorce. Don't worry, baby. You'll kill him soon. 
Debbie Mazar. Then, Debbie played the role of hot female badass Spice at the age of 31. Spice was a hippie who coaxed Two-Face into doing the wrong deeds. In stark contradiction to Sugar, Spice is the ideal role model of the bad girl stereotype. She was seen as constant competition with a blonde named Sugar for Two-Face's attention. Spice took part in the Dark Knight's trap after learning about Bruce Wayne's identity from the Riddler and Two-Face. Now, Debbie is 58 now and married to Gabriel Corcos, with whom she shares two children. She launched her acting career with minor roles in films like Goodfellas. She then went on to play the lead characters in series like Civil Wars and L.A. Law. In 1984, she made her debut appearance on television in the Graffiti Rock Pilot, a hip-hop dance program. She starred in five of Madonna's music videos. Videos. Debbie even worked for Madonna as a makeup artist. Elizabeth Sanders. Then, Elizabeth Sanders did some good comedy in the 1995 Batman Forever. We also saw her in Batman and Robin. She played the character of the columnist, famous by the name of Gossip Gertie. Gertie was responsible for spreading spicy gossip to Gotham City. Her topic always revolved around Batman and his enemies. Through her top-notch news, she was always in talks. Now, Elizabeth is no other than the widowed wife of the creator of Batman, Bob Kane. She portrayed Gossip Gertie in Batman. Batman Forever. She was one of the few characters who appeared in the next film, Batman and Robin, as well as Gothamite in Batman Returns. She has been dedicatedly associated with the Batman series. We see her portrayed in several documentaries about Batman. Rene Aubergenois. Then, Rene was assigned to the role of the doctor at Arkham Asylum in 1995 Batman Forever when he was 55. His character was named after the director of 1989 Batman Tim Burton. Harvey Dent's breakout was first discovered by Dr. Burton and a note in his cell reading, The Bat Must Die. Nigma claimed to know Batman's identity and Dr. Burton let him be interviewed. Now, the star passed away at 79 on December 8, 2019. He was married to Judith Helen Mahali and shared two children with her. In his splendidly long and soaring career, he received several awards for his performances in Twelfth Night, Chekhov, in Yalta, Richard III, and The Misanthrope. Rene was passionate about his acting. He once said, I am never going to retire. I will die with my boots on. And that is exactly what he did. Evil, aren't you, my friend? Are you going to kill me? Joe Grafasi. Then, Joe played the role of the bank guard who faced trouble with two face goons when he was 51. Hawkins was employed as a security guard at the Second Bank of Gotham. When Two Face and his goons looted the bank, he was held as a prisoner. Poor Hawkins was bound with chains and confined to a vault. To add more, the safe was then loaded with acid by Two Face and flown by helicopter. Hope came with the Dark Knight for Hawkins, who intervened and saved him. Now, the star has turned 78 and is in a happy marriage with Jane Ira Bloom. He gained recognition for his role as Hashi Horowitz in Law & Order Special Victims Unit. He was a part of other hits like Splash, City of Hope, The Naked Man, and others. He is known for acting in the two-man play Huey at the Stratford Festival in Ontario. Philip Moon. Then, Philip Moon played a minor character in the 1995 Batman Forever. We saw him as a newscaster at the age of 34. He covered news about Gotham City, and he was often seen with a female newscaster, which was played by Jessica Ta. Together with her, he'll keep the people informed about any danger of the progress made by the police or by Batman. Now, having turned 61, the star has made a decent career in filmography. We gotta see him in L.A. Law as a.k.a. John Stevens. Deadwood, Tales of the City, and others. His last appearance was as Dr. Kim in the 2000 film Hydra. Jessica Tuck was the female newscaster in Batman Forever when she was 32. Her role was small but added more insight to the film. She is seen working with a male newscaster. She covered all the major events which happened in Gotham City and delivered news about people's favorite hero, Batman. Then, Jessica has now turned 59 and is in a happy marriage with Robbie Kosef, a South African businessman. The couple together parent one child. He saw her in a 2009 castle. She is popularly known for her performance in 2011 Super 8, True Blood, and Judging Army. The star actress holds a degree in psychology from Yale University.
Dennis Palandino played the role of the thug boss in 1995 Batman Forever. Palandino in Batman Forever was accountable for Harvey Dent's deformity. Harvey Dent was severely burned when Boss Morani threw acid at him, giving Harvey his second personality, Two-Face, which stands at top of cruelty. Boss Morani's small role leads to major turn of events. Now, Dennis has been long married to Barbara A. Starkey and shares a child with her. Dennis had a limited career in filmography and appeared in only a numbered number of films. He was also seen in the 2006 Find Me Guilty and 1998 Great Expectations.